What's going on YouTube, Aaron here, and in today's video, we are gonna be jumping into the story around comedian and actor Bob Saget. Many of you are aware of his work on the screen through shows like Full House, uh, he was the voice of Ted on How I Met Your Mother, and many other shows, but he was also a seasoned comedian, a really good comedian as well, and he was setting off on his new 2022 tour, uh, called I Don't Do Negative. And he was only on his second show, uh, where on January 9th, he was pronounced dead in his hotel room in Orlando, Florida. We're gonna go through the timeline of events of the day leading up to that, and then showcase kind of the location of where Bob was at and where he ended up, and kind of talk about some of the uh, mystery that is now kind of surrounding the case, uh, because there's been new information that has come out uh, that give a little bit more detail into the cause of his death. It was kind of looked at from a certain angle by, by the general public for the first month, and then now the, the narrative has kind of shifted. And so I want to talk about that with you guys. I want to hear what you guys think down in the comments below. Uh, but let's go into the timeline. Let's go through the maps and look into kind of what Bob's final day or a couple of days looked like. Um, and then we'll get into everything else. Now, like I said, Bob had just started his I Don't Do Negative tour here in 2022. Uh, he had just completed his first show on January 7th in Orlando, Florida at the Hard Rock Cafe. I would imagine since he had a couple of shows right around this time in Florida that he probably stayed at the Ritz Carlton after his show at the Hard Rock as well because the next day he was set to go to Point Vedra Beach, Florida, which is a couple hours north near Jacksonville. So he likely stayed at the Ritz Carlton after his Orlando show. And then after the Orlando show uh, on the 8th, sometime during the day, made the two hour and 20 ish minute drive up to Jacksonville to the Point Vedra concert hall. And then as we know, he actually died he was pronounced dead the next day in Orlando, so he would have made the drive back. So let's go kind of through the timeline. Let's look into this concert hall. So this is actually the Point Vedra concert hall. It kind of looks like a church, in my opinion. It's not massive. Um, there's quite a few seats. Uh, someone like Bob Saget could clearly, uh, in this point in his career, sell out a place that is two to three to four times larger than this. Um, but this is known as a really intimate location uh, here in North Florida. But if you look, the event on their site said that it was starting at 8 p.m. Now he had an opening act. So let's just say that the opening act was 30 minutes. Um, even if we're going on the long end, 45 minutes, let's just say Bob takes the stage at 9 p.m. It was said that he did two hours, a two hour set. So that would put him at basically 11 o'clock. Let's just say he leaves the venue at 11.30. Oftentimes they kind of stick around and talk to people that work at the venue, or maybe he talks to a few fans. I don't know what all went on, but let's just say he leaves the venue at 11.30. So if he left the venue at 11.30 to drive the two hours and 20 minutes back, that's gonna put him back to the hotel close to 2 a.m. and maybe they stopped for a quick bite to eat before they left Jacksonville. Let's just say they left Jacksonville closer to midnight. Then that would put them back in Orlando around 2.20 in the morning. Bob later posted on January 9th after the show because as we remember, January 8th was the show and so it would have been sometime after midnight that he posted this to his Instagram. He actually posted this same photo to his Twitter as well, but let's read what he says here on Instagram. He says, okay, I love tonight's show at the Ponta Vedra Concert Hall in Jacksonville. In Jacksonville, really nice audience, lost lots of positivity. And then he goes on to say that it was the same, he had the same feeling from the people last night in Orlando at the Hard Rock. Very appreciative and fun audiences. Thanks again to comedian Tim Wilkins for opening. I had no idea I did a two hour set tonight. I'm back in comedy like I was when I was 26. I guess I'm finding my new voice and loving every moment of it. All right, see you in two weeks, January 28th and 29th um, at the PB Improv, which is the Palm Beach Improv. So he was set to go to uh, Palm Beach in South Florida, 
later on a couple weeks uh, into uh, a couple weeks later in January. And so I would imagine that he would have probably flown back home for a couple weeks, a week and a half, and then came back out to continue the tour. Um, but either way, he posted that on his Instagram and then he also posted it uh, on his Twitter. He didn't have the exact same caption, but if you actually look at the geo or not the geo tag, the um, timestamp, this was posted on January 9th. So after the show, after he likely got back to the Ritz Carlton in Orlando, this was posted at 3.42 a.m. Now I looked into if Bob Saget has like a PR team that runs his social media for him. Cause I was just thinking, was it him that posted this? Did he post this or, or does someone else have access to all his accounts? And I think he, from what I gathered, it's probably likely that he gets certain things in terms of like details and information around his tour sent to him. And then he'll like do all of that himself. He'll copy it, paste it uh, from an email. Um, but I don't think, I think he tweeted this himself. I think he posted this to his Instagram himself. Um, I could be wrong on that, but I think this came from his phone and came from his personal uh, input. So like I said, he came home uh, shortly after uh, the next day on January 9th is when they found him deceased in his hotel room, specifically at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So if we look at that timestamp once again, that's only 12 hours and 18 minutes after this post was made. This post was made 3.42 a.m., basically 4 in the morning, and then he's found at 4 in the afternoon on the same day. So something happened between 4 a.m. and 4 p.m. And the general public, I think, initially thought that it was a heart attack. I know, say what you want about TMZ, um, but they posted on January 16th that his family had a history of heart attacks. Um, his dad was affected. Three of his uncles were affected. And so I think a lot of people probably gathered that Bob Saget had passed away from some sort of complication related to the heart. Um, he was found on his bed with his left arm over his chest. There was no indications of foul play, no indications of drugs or alcohol. It's not like there were beer cans everywhere and pill canisters, like things like that. Um, it was pretty much conclusive that there was no foul play, no drugs or alcohol, and that, you know, people probably thought that he died of a heart attack. Um, and now into February is where everything kind of shifted again. The, the case kind of took a weird turn because a, a month later on February 16th, TMZ posted that authorities believe Bob hit his head potentially on the headboard um, because it was said that uh, Bob Saget reported to have severe skull fractures. So this is from the New York Times. It says such an extensive head injury would likely have left the actor confused, if not unconscious, experts say. So this is getting into the kind of mystery now that some people feel around the Bob Saget story. It is said that Bob Saget, the comedian actor, died after what appeared to be a significant blow to the head, one that fractured his skull in several places and caused bleeding across sides, both sides of his brain according to an autopsy report re released Friday. They go on to say, it is most probable that the descendant suffered an unwitnessed fall backwards and struck the posterior aspects of his head. Still, the autopsy left a number of unresolved questions about how exactly Mr. Saget, 65, was so badly hurt. So we know that he was found dead in a hotel room in the Ritz-Carlton. Uh, they say his family said this week that the authorities determined that he hit his head, thought nothing of it, and went to sleep. If the actor struck his head hard enough and just in the wrong place, it is possible that fractures would have extended to other parts of his skull, brain injury experts say. So basically they're, ba they're saying that it's like an egg. You hit it in the right spot and it can crack from the back to the front. So I think that that's what they're maybe thinking happened to Bob here. But experts say that with such an extensive injury, it was unlikely that Mr. Saget would have intentionally ignored it. The injury would have likely left him confused, if not unconscious. Quote, I doubt he was lucid, Dr. Bazarian said, and doubt he thought, I'm just going to sleep this off. 
Some neurosurgeons said that it would be unusual for a typical fall to cause Mr. Saget's set of fractures to the back, the right side, and the front of his skull. Those doctors said that the injuries appeared more reminiscent of ones suffered by people who fall from a considerable height or get thrown from their seat in a car crash. So these are kind of mixed feelings between these two people. Obviously, you've got one doctor saying, you know, you can hit your head and you can sustain injuries if you hit your head in the right spot. And then you've got other people saying that these injuries are reminiscent of people falling from a high place or going through a, a serious car wreck. The autopsy, though, found no injuries to other parts of Mr. Saget's body, as would be expected in a lengthier fall. The medical examiner ruled the death was accidental. The local sheriff's office had previously said there were no signs of foul play. This is significant trauma, said Dr. Gavin Britz, the chair in neurosurgery at Houston Methodist. This is something I find with someone with a baseball bat to the head or who had fallen from 20 or 30 feet. So this is where you've got people like me now talking about this going, okay, well, what is it like? Because did he fall from 20 feet? Like, we need to be looking into security camera footage from when he got back to the Ritz-Carlton. Did he fall on his way back to to his room, uh, down a set of stairs, or over some railing? Like, what happened to Bob Saget, right? Uh, because you've got these people saying, obviously no signs of foul play. There's no significant marks to other parts of the body that would indicate a fall and so likely it was just an accident, but it's pretty wild that these other neurosurgeons are saying that this is something that they find with people that have been hit with baseball bats, similar injuries. It's like, that's a significant head injury. Um, he goes on to say the knock ruptured veins in the space between the membrane covering the brain and the brain itself causing blood to pool, the autopsy indicated. So... The brain, secured in a hard skull, has nowhere to move, doctor said, and the result is a compression of brain centers. So basically, he was bleeding in his brain. You know, that's how he that's how he died. It also was said in another article that he had the Omicron version of COVID sometime in late November, early December, and that he was still actually testing positive, but he had no symptoms. I don't, I don't know the exact truth to that, if that is true. Um, obviously, he did not die of COVID. Uh, whether or not he was still testing positive or not, who knows? Um, but what are your guys' thoughts? What do you think is going to come of this? Are we going to have a Bob Saget style documentary that there's like mystery around this? Or do you think there's no mystery? Do you think it is just, you know, my thoughts are, did he get back super late from this, this big long day? He had a show late at night, gets back to his hotel a couple hours later the guy probably wanted to take a shower. Did he just take a shower, get out of the shower, slip on the tile and hit his head and then make his way to the bed where he died? Uh, because, you know, a lot of people are, are understanding of the fact that if you have a traumatic brain injury and you go to sleep, uh, sometimes you don't wake up. And so, you know, you hear about people that have to stay up all night when they have a concussion. This is why. But do you think there's mystery? Do you think there's any more mystery around this case? Are we going to see a documentary around the Bob Saget death uh, to see you know, were they are they going to be able to pull security camera footage to show Bob walking from his car to his hotel room? Did anything happen? Was there more going on than what we know at the surface level right now? Because obviously we all kind of thought maybe Bob had a heart attack and that's kind of what the general public thought at the beginning of all this. And then now. Uh, it's very clear that that's not the case. He hit his head, uh, and not only did he hit his head, he hit his head really freaking hard. So what are your thoughts? I would love to know the exact route from the comedy show to the Ritz-Carlton. Did they stop somewhere? Did they go get some food? What like Did he hit his head somewhere prior to getting back to the Ritz-Carlton? Like I said, did he hit his head somewhere in the Ritz-Carlton? Are they... Do they have that footage? Did they? Can they confirm that he safely made it to his hotel room? I'd like to know all of that. I think, obviously, um, it's a sad, sad situation, no matter how you look at it. Um, but what are your guys' thoughts? Let me know down in the comments. I just want to say, also, rest in peace to Bob Saget. Thank you so much for making our houses a little bit fuller. Um, 
I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.